Good afternoon. I'm excited um, to talk about some of our new communication initiatives. So this photo kind of resembles how we grew up communicating with one another. And the world is a fast pace um, and always changing, including communications. So today, communications is done electronically, either through text messaging, social media, um, or even email. So every organization, including Halston Association USA, uh, has to keep up to with the most um, different types of communication. Eric Grant, who couldn't be with us today, he's um, fighting an illness, um, is out of St. Joseph, Missouri, and he's working with us as our association's communication advisor um, and has helped us kind of um, gauge our communication initiatives. So when we start, um, started out with setting out um, the new initiatives, we had four primary objectives that we wanted to cover and look at. The first one being to strengthen the economic position of U.S. registered Holsteins um, producers through the expanded communication program. And that would be um, to share the story of our breeders and producers with the consumers. The next one being um, is to, cr to grow relevance and market awareness of Holstein brands, um, strategic in initiatives, and the programs. And that all um, kind of came down to, to develop this communication platform that um, resulted in new revenue streams for the association. Looking at the primary objectives and what we want to accomplish, we, we also looked at um, kind of the challenges we face in the dairy industry, and the first one being um, the price volatility and the economic sustainability. Um, and looking at these challenges kind of helped us uh, geared our communication initiatives to the different platforms we wanted to, to reach. The next challenge was the noise we heard from other breeds of the efficiency and components and always the changing environment um, of the media, like I said before, the shift from print to now digital is becoming more relevant. And the lingering media and public scrutiny of how much is too much and um, different things that we hear in, in the media, and as well as the association relevance in light of um, st structural changes in the, in the industry. So we set out, uh, we started by a process called putting hay in the barn. And when I say hay, it's the assets of either the photos, the words, or the videos that we wanted to use to kind of push this communication initiative forward and advance our message. So that started out by visiting 14 dairies um, this past year to kind of produce segments and get their words and um, write articles uh, that went hand in hand with the redesign of the pulse. With those um, videos and um, texts, we were able to now launch a weekly radio station. Um, so they are two to three minutes in length. Um, they can be heard on ag radio, um, all nationwide, as well as if you receive RFD2V. Um, they're shown on the market day report that happens um, during the day. And that's um, kind of pushed our initiatives forward. So the most exciting, um, biggest initiative um, was Holstein America, and that aired about two weeks ago now um, on RFD-TV. Um, and so those um, highlighted um, the iconic black and white um, Holstein cow and sponsored by Merck Animal Health. Um, the hour-long program was on our FDT twice, um, but you can also find it on YouTube and our um, website. website. Um, and so with that, um, that also helped us produce the, um, like I said, the radio stations and the market day report. Um, here's a sample of two of those um, that could be seen on market day report and heard on the radio nationwide. For nearly 140 years, Joe Lair and his family have been dairy farming in Mount Calvary, Wisconsin, near the south central region of the dairy state. He and his two brothers, the family's fourth generation, operate Lair Dairy LLC, home to 500 milking cows and elite registered Holstein genetics. So I love milk. I love that I'm a milk producer. Um, but I also 
genuinely enjoy um, developing genetics and building genetics and improving on the genetics that we have in our herd. He runs the genetic division of the farm called Holy Land Genetics. For eight years, they've been using genomic technology to advance their herd to impressive levels. We test every every calf that is eligible to be tested. I'm utilizing that in a variety of ways, whether it's uh, marketing, uh, mating decisions, uh, culling decisions. It's, it's changed everything in terms of of how we manage genetics and how confident we can be in those genetics. To make the most out of the herd's genomic data, Lair uses the comprehensive management tool in light, offered by Holstein Association USA in partnership with Zoetis. It takes our genomic tests that we run on all of our calves and puts it into a really easy to use system where I can compare, see what the late, what the trends are in our genetic progress. Um, that's a very, very convenient uh, program through the Holstein Association that I use every day on the dairy. The dairy's use of genomic technology has opened new doors for the Lair family, including a growing market for elite genetics. A source of income, Lair says that helps navigate times of fluctuating milk prices and unpredictable markets. With this uh, extra revenue that genetics create and uh, not to mention the improved genetic base for the herd that we've, we've accomplished, the goal is to have a sustainable business with profitable uh, dairy cows that produce food for people for many generations to come. Learn more about the Enlight program at EnlightDairy.com. I'm Lauren Williams. The dairy industry is advancing at lightning speed with new technology impacting nearly every step of the production chain. And that includes sophisticated science and rapid improvements in genetics. Darren Wilhite has more. For generations, registered Holstein breeders have been committed to perfecting herd genetics for optimal performance. And today, the Holstein breed leads the way when it comes to innovative genomic technology. Paul Burr, Holstein Association USA Genetic Advancement Committee Chair, says the registered Holstein storied past sets them up for an excellent future. The Holstein cow is the most documented mammal of any kind in the world. We've been collecting confirmation data for 70, 80 years, production data for over 100 years. The Holstein breed as a whole has documented 1.8 million genomic tests. He says that massive amount of data is a tremendous tool for advancing genetic progress, and there's still much potential on the horizon. And the world's largest dairy cattle breed organization, Holstein Association USA, brings the latest science and innovation to its members nationwide. You can learn more by visiting their website at HolsteinUSA.com. So those are two examples. As you can see, um, gathering those assets, uh, we could do a br broad spectrum of association news and really dairy industry news. Um, and those radio um, are sent through national broad, um, far farm broadcasters, and then like I said, on RFDTV. Uh, with a quick show of hands, um, have you heard them on the radio or watched them on RFDTV? Perfect, yeah, great. Uh, so our next initiative is probably the one um, that most of us noticed first, and it was the redesign of the Holstein Pulse. Um, the different look and new features um, are more fast satisfying uh, for readers. Um, and the, in the beginning, we didn't really know where this was leading or heading, um, but we we're happy with the results. It's the same magazine, um, but with a fresh look. And so another initiative was um, What's Up at Holstein USA, and those are a video series posted on our website homepage, um, and they cover a variety of topics from our products and services to meeting new different, um, different staff members, how you can become more involved in the association, um, as well as news from the association. Um, those videos are posted on our YouTube channel um, and can be found on there or our website um, pa for past videos. Um, they're posted every Thursday on our homepage with a different photo, um, so click that and you can find the latest association news. 
Uh, like I said in the beginning, uh, news is becoming more digital, and we're keeping up with the times with a variety of social media accounts. Find and follow us at uh, our YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and newly instituted Instagram accounts to stay up to date with the latest association happenings. As we become more involved in the social media, um, our followers have increased. The activity on Facebook increased our audience from 10,388 followers to 13,827 followers in a year. And working with Eric on the wide range of topics and um, projects, especially Halstein America, we saw growth on our YouTube channel as well. The spike of viewership um, was 37,418 um, in the last year. And Halstein America was viewed over 2,200 times. Engaging our audience, um, we can find that 81% of our viewers are male and 18% are female. And, and we're really reaching the world with the United States, India, Pakistan, Egypt, and Canada. They're all really wanting to know what um, U.S. registered hall scenes um, are all about. And so as we look to the future and decide what's, what's next with our communication initiatives, we saw the viewership of social media accounts incre uh, increase. And we're excited to um, see the success Holstein America had in the dairy industry. And Holstein Association USA will continue to work to expanding those initiatives to reach a wide range of audiences and working on the growth that we saw uh, we'll build um, the increase of the audience. Um, we'll repackage the videos that we saw today or social media accounts and things like that um, to be really into the multiple media sources from print and digital and any anywhere in between. Uh, you can look forward to another broadcast of Holstein America late this summer. Um, and stay tuned to our social media and watch for a press release um, of when you can view that on RFD TV. And thank you for liking and sharing and being engaged on our social media um, accounts.